Hey everyone, I am Evan from First Updates Now and I am here with Team 3506 Yeti Robotics. We will be looking at the awesome robot they've built this year, their intake and arm system, their handoff and carriage assembly. Behind me are Zeta, Pavin, and Vincent, and they will be talking more about this robot on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. I will hand this off to Zeta to tell us more about the whole intake and arm assembly. Uh, okay, so for our intake, we have like standard like wheels which spin the game piece and we have it, it works for both the cone and cube game piece but we mostly just use it for the cube now um we and it's connected to these arms that are connected to like two gearboxes on like one on both sides uh yeah we have gearboxes on both sides for for the flipping and um yeah the we have pistons for like actuating the, the intake fall and yeah Thank you. And is there, uh, what made this work better for you to have like the double cross pistons, for example, and the pinching intake instead of a roller bar like other teams have done? Um, so for having it actuate uh, helps to like guide the game piece in before, um, before like it actually grabs it. And also for our handoff, it needs to be able to let go um, in order to actually like drop it into the carriage. Um, we have double pistons because we want to be able to shoot more accurately, so it actually um, keeps the index centered. Thank you. It's really awesome to see just how more teams are doing fat, better design and taking a lot into controls and stuff. I will now pass this off to Pavan to talk more about the elevator and then the carriage and handoff mechanism. Um, we've had the uh, handoff mechanism since uh, our first competition. Um, it was a little out there design. We didn't see many more uh, of them. But it basically, uh, what it allowed us to do was, the main reason we went with it in the first place is so we could do um, cycle from the ground and we didn't have to go all the way to the double substation or the chute um, by getting them uh, the game piece that were on the floor in auto. Um, so that's why we went with the handoff design. But after seeing um, our performance at our first event, we kind of realized that um, the hand handing off of the two different mechanisms um, in a real match with like real contact, uh, obviously spinning around with our sort of drive and going over all the bumps on the field, colliding with other robots, it can be a little bit chaotic. Um, so we adapted this carriage. Um, before it didn't used to have this third roller here, uh, but then we added it and what that allows us to do is intake directly from the double substation. Um, we can actually extend if um, Vincent would demonstrate and then we can flip our carriage. Um, oops, a little mishap. Boom, okay. <laughs> um, and he can spin the all in and the rollers spin and that allows us to take uh, cones in. We can take cones in from this gap and we can do cubes from this gap. Yeah. So the cone will go into this gap here and then with uh, clicking elevator down, it will automatically bring the over down and flip the cone back into the frame perimeter. That way we can travel without having any parts outside the frame perimeter. Um, and then it's basically reverse to for us to score. We just cycle our elevator back out, flip the carriage, and then uh, split the cone out. Our uh, elevator is also rigged with uh, cascading, so that way all the stages move at the same time. And um, besides that, um, anything else you want to mention about it? It's, so it's, it's really awesome to see every doing more stuff with the handoff mechanism. I haven't seen this on any other robots so far. What are you doing in regards to auto and vision controls on this? Yeah, so for auto, we're trying to do a, um, we're trying to do a two piece uh, auto with First starting off the cone, scoring that, and then grabbing a cube from the ground, and then shooting that into the high. 
and then going to balance. Right now, we're mostly running our just one piece and then going to balance, but mostly because that's the most consistent thing we have so far. It basically always will balance and we always get the one game piece. Um, and we've seen that to be very beneficial for us in terms of RP and during qualifications. Um, and then we hope to get our two piece tuned better for next calm. But, um, and then in terms of uh, vision, we're using Limelight to get, uh, get April tag uh, locations. And then we can, from there, automatically move our robot to, uh, li to align with the cones or to align with the uh, cube section. And we also use the April tags to automatically align with the double station. That way our driver doesn't have to uh, fumble around with trying to align the robot, especially when they have to try to score on the far side of the field. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. And it, one last question. Is there anything else you guys are working on, we're looking to improve before the next competition? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think there's always stuff to improve. Like, we want to always, you know, find ways to speed up our cycle times, whether that's making our elevator move a little more smoothly, uh, getting our auto lines to happen quicker. Um, of course, like I already said, we want to try and improve our autos. Um, there's always more to do. And, uh, for example, our LEDs we added this season or th this past competition or to try and communicate with our human player better and quicker. So I think there's always stuff that we are trying to improve on. Um, what that is right now, we're still trying to figure that out, but we do know we want to speed up our uh, intaking. We want to speed up um, how fast we can uh, hand off and all that, so. Well, thank you. And definitely you should, you should check out their auto. It's been one of the most consistent throughout both competitions they've been to. I want to say thank you guys for doing this interview. I wish you guys the best of luck during competition. And thank you for sharing once again. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.